So I'm here with Dan and Jackie on Zoom, and Dan has, if we can just describe it briefly, Dan, can you describe your Zoom avatar for us? It's supposed to be a, uh, in D&D parlance, it's a Svurf Neblin, which is a dark gnome. It's a, <laughs> see, in D&D, there's gnomes, but no one really likes gnomes. So dark gnomes are like the slightly creepier underground gnomes. And that's that was my last character when we played D&D. And we mainly use Zoom for D&D, so my... Every time I join one of these interviews, like the first thing people see is my big profile picture, which is like a ridiculous pencil drawing of a gnome character. <laughs> I keep forgetting to change it to something. It's not a pencil drawing of a gnome. It's it looks it like a cross between Calvin from Calvin and Hobbes peeing on things. You know that? Mm, you see it on mud yeah. flaps and whatnot. Well, and that, yeah. Link from the Adventures of Link. It's yeah. true. Calvin has some sort of urinary problem, I think, because he <laughs> he pees on everything. Is he all right? Ford, Chevy. You know, he's, <laughs> he has no respect for these brands. Yeah, that's a whole whole other story I'd love to get into. <laughs> but this is our first time talking in about eight years. And wow. we last talked when you had worked on the Kickstarter for a real passion project. Mm. You had a hit, at least in my mind, it was a hit. And hopefully <laughs> it really was a hit. Phineas Proudbottom? Icarus Proudbottom. Icarus! Because he flo close. flow too close to the sun. Mm -hmm. Icarus Proudbottom. <laughs> I always remember the Proudbottom because of the, <laughs> I remember that came from farts in some way. Which yeah, because poops. In the, first, <laughs> yeah, in the first Icarus Proudbottom game, he's propelled through the sky by his poops. He's yeah. like kind of flying. So I thought Proudbottom was a funny name. <laughs> <laughs> and then Icarus because he flies. Right. Yeah. And he taught typing yeah i mm. love that game we talked about it Thanks. and at that time you also were working on a new game in the icarus proud bottom franchise where he <laughs> cinematic goes <to> universe <laughs> where he goes to space it was like star trek because uh jackie and dan you both like star trek but and we both I was... love star trek <laughs> yeah <laughs> we just watched a bunch of deep space nine again i rewatched deep space nine like three times a year i fucking really? love it do you prefer it to next generation overall <laughs> oh it's such a hard mm. choice i feel like they're mm. so different that it's hard to like pick a favorite between the two i feel like if you know i had a gun to my head i'd say yes but wow. again like they're so different that I, I don't know i grew up with the original series so that was my favorite mm. um not anyway. anymore though oh uh, again like it's so it they're so different yeah yeah but again mm. gun to my head deep space nine Jackie always like talks about how much he loves the original series. Then whenever we go to watch it, I'm like, let's watch this one. She's like, no, don't watch that one. It's horrible. What about this one? No, don't watch that one. The don't quality watch that. between the episodes varies so much. And even mm. the tone and just the writing is just all over the place. It, yeah. You could definitely pick like the best episode ever right next to like total insanity. There's only like three episodes she approves of. <laughs> the That's not series. true. What's one of your favorite episodes, Jackie, if you can? From think? original series or yeah. any? Uh, original series. Oh, geez. Uh, Enterprise Incident was young Jackie's favorite. What happens in that one? There's a female Romulan commander, mm. and oh. she's kind of like the bad guy, and she like kind of schmoozes Spock, but really Spock is sort of schmoozing her and is using her to steal the uh, cloaking device. And it's oh, like wow. this whole thing. How yeah. do you schmooze Spock though? Because he's all. Are you kidding me? Like half the episodes in Star Trek are schmoozing Spock, especially nowadays with the new ones. Yeah, yeah that's it's true. All to me, Spock is about the he's... person you wish you were: mm. logical, smart, making the right choices, mm. dealing underneath the surface with like that guy who just wants to punch Kirk in the face, but he doesn't. Mm. He just raises the eyebrow. Yeah, yeah. But then he does fight him with the sticks <laughs> over his pride. <laughs> That one time, the, anyway. The Lerpa, yes. Jackie, you are <laughs> blowing my mind. I wish this was a Star Trek podcast so we could spend the next hour. Oh, just God. About that. Well, it can I would, be. 
Yeah, it can, <laughs> it can be tonight. I'll only step. Before but that <laughs> game, Icarus Proudbottom in space. What was the rest of the I name? I think that one was called Starship Captain. Yeah, Starship. Icarus Proudbottom, Starship Captain. Yeah, that did not end up becoming the game that CNN and the Washington Post mm. called you about. No, and actually, yeah, we we're trying to kickstart that one. And in retrospect, that one was a bad idea because it was a really big concept. And we we're still making games in Flash back then. It was yeah. just it was just too big of a game to make in Flash. Mm. Like I was pretty good with Flash and I could have hacked it together, but it would have become a nightmare. It was basically gonna be like an adventure game, like more than like a flying a ship game. Just like an adventure game, it's really dialogue driven, a lot of jokes, but the whole thing takes place like in a enterprise type of bridge. Mm. And yeah. I feel like the main problem with the Kickstarter was we had such a clear idea of what we wanted like it to look like and we what we wanted like the characters to be and what the jokes would be and the premise and everything but not such a, a clear idea of like the gameplay it we we had sort of a loose idea but especially in the kickstarter video it wasn't really evident as to like the exact gameplay would feel like and i feel mm. like some people who i don't know weren't quite certain about the game or like, eh, which I get, like, I, I don't know. I feel like a lot of days nowadays, I'm more drawn to games that are strictly gameplay and not like a story. Mm. So like, I get it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you just, if I witness this correctly, you just told people, I agree with you. You should <laughs> not have funded my game. <laughs> <laughs> it, we, it was like a big, like, I don't know. We were trying to bite off a lot more than we might have been able to chew. I'm not really sure. You know, the yeah. thing is, too, it's, <laughs> it's about how you use Kickstarter. We didn't do it right. Like, um, mm. I was really trying to kickstart the game with Kickstarter. Like, truly, you know, I hadn't really, we hadn't done that much. Mm. But especially over time, I don't, first of all, I think Kickstarter is rough for video games now. It's got a huge oh, yeah. board game scene. It's gotten mm. really rough. Yeah. There was a brief moment where like lots of games were making a lot of money off Kickstarter. It was we missed that wave. For yeah. Sure. It, unfortunately. <laughs> well, <laughs> you, the, yeah. So we're going back to 2014. We have such, we have had such a robust conversation <laughs> and we have not even talked about Trombone Champ yet. This is just, <laughs> what? <Yeah. laughs> and it must be nice what? for you to talk a little less about it because as you were telling me, hey, it's I'm been a lot one. of interviews in a short <laughs> amount of time about hmm. one part of your life. So that's, I yeah. want you to have as much fun as I'm having talking about this so we can yeah. talk for 30 <laughs> seconds about trombone shape. Yeah. Uh, but you have been making games, as I recall, for about a decade. Oh, right gosh. Right? Even even before Dan and I were making games together, Dan's always been making stuff like even mm. as a kid with like what game maker yeah, I was one of those Q basic kids who made like adventure games, like the text ones. They're horrible. <laughs> those text based adventure games. Um, yeah, I'd click and play. That's oh, what it was. That's which what I was, think became right. Game Maker. And then, yeah, we made a bunch of Flash games. Um, Trembo and Champ is our first like real product that we tried to sell and have at like actual quote unquote professional standards, I would say. Is that right? Because you've always yeah. been on my mind, and we talked a little bit before. You haven't always been on my mind, but you've been <laughs> on my mind since I first learned about you with the Icarus Proudbottom. Some of your music is mm. in Skatebird, yeah, which, uh, did well, and uh, you're in the credits of, and you didn't awesome. know it, but you were a part of a team that won an award for it. Uh, That's nice. Right for so, so you've been doing stuff that I'm aware of for a long time. But Trombone Champ is really like your first game that you sold? Yeah, basically. It's the first one on Steam. Yeah, you know, I, there's yeah. some other Icarus Proud Bottom games that you sort of polished up and put on what was it? Itch.io. Itch mm. that, that was pay what you want. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I guess technically, yes. Technically, no. I don't know. The first, <laughs> it, I guess like literally the first game I sold was uh, Icarus Proud Bottom's Typing Party. I'm not oh, sure if you right. played that one. Yeah, it's a two-player typing game. So you can plug two keyboards into a computer and you can play. Even that's just a Flash game. It's like it has a wrapper so you can play it on PCs now. Because Flash oh, cool. doesn't even work anymore. Yeah, yeah. But, um, super dead. And mm -hmm. I briefly was selling that for like $5. But then during the pandemic, I just set it to free. Because whatever. Oh. It was because it wasn't making any money. So whatever. Just put it out there, you know. Um, I mean, like that that game you polish pretty well. Uh, kind of. Um, we actually made an arcade cabinet for it because it was at the Museum of the Moving Image for some video game um, exhibit. Indiecade. Indiecade, yeah. I was trying to remember. 
Um, but now it lives at a bar in Brooklyn near us called Wonderville. And it's still oh. there. You could go mm -hmm. and play it. Does it um, take quarters? No, no, all no, all free. Um, it actually the whole bar has um indie games in it. Uh so just nothing but like especially local New York City uh indie game devs. It's very unique. I like the place a lot. Yeah, I would, sounds great. Yeah, I would actually like to make more of those cabinets because I found out that like a lot of the cabinets at the bar that hosts our typing cabinet, they actually have a bunch of cop, like, you know, they're all over the country. Mm. There's one called like Black Emperor, which is a really fun game. Turns out there's like a dozen of those throughout the country. I had no idea. Yeah. And actually I've, I've seen a few people who manage arcades mention the typing game, like our typing game. Oh, it makes yeah. me realize like, oh crap, like I could be selling these things. Like, you know, just... it's hard though. Like, how do you ship something like yeah, that? I or I, I don't know. There's a lot of logistics involved. It would it would yeah. be exciting. I don't I know. I mean, uh, when I go to Best Buy once a week <laughs> because my seven-year-old wants to look at Minecraft Legos, the exact same set huh. every week. He never <laughs> yeah. gets sick of looking at the box and saying, maybe someday. <laughs> but I see arcade cabinets, relatively small ones that you like mm. build yourself after you get home on sale for like 600 bucks and they seem to be doing okay so there may be a way devolver really i know they put out an arcade version of enter the gungeon i can't remember what it was called oh that's cool yeah we yeah. could talk we can just talk about stuff i just like <laughs> talking to you but i have to focus a little bit more on trombone champ because i've had this question setting in my head ever what? since i saw it so i didn't know it was you at first mm. And I was like, that game's going to do so well. That's going to be the next Beat Saber, except it's oh, uh, hilarious. And <laughs> I remember when Beat Saber only had like 20,000, 30,000 uh, copies sold. But after it got that credibility that people who were considered experts or in the know or influencers or whatever started talking about it, then just everyone got it. So I feel like Trombone Champ definitely has that. Oh, geez. Uh, potential especially if you can get it on switch or something and motion well, control to, there's so much you could do and i'm sure you've already thought about it you don't need armchair <laughs> game dev for me but when i saw it was you that made it i immediately got a question that oh. uh, burst into my head so hard that i've been waiting to ask it to you for for the full week since i've known you were behind trombone champ it's better which be good. is <laughs> build, you're building it up <laughs> do you think you would have made trombone champ if you had been making million selling games this whole time or do you think there was something about trombone champ that was born from the fact that you've never even you've been making games your whole life dan and, and jackie you've been contributing to them for a long time you did the uh art on trombone champ do you think you would have wanted to make a game like that if you had just been profiting off games uh, this whole time? I'd say probably not, actually, because one of the things that drew me to the concept was I just I thought it was a funny concept. I liked the concept, but I was also trying to. Like, think of a concept that was achievable in a short amount of time, because mm. like you can so easily spend like years and years and years in a game. Um and I was trying to learn Unity, which is like the the big game engine that runs the trombone champ. Mm -hmm. And so I had this concept and I was like, ooh, this concept would be like, it's small. It's just like a music game with a trombone. I can make this in like six months. It'd be a perfect like starter project. Mm. And so that was ultimately why I decided to pick it up. Like, well, I did like the concept, but again, it was the ease. It was like the relative simplicity of the idea. So yeah, if I, if, I mean, if we were already successful, I probably would have not picked it up it would have been like a funny little idea that i didn't bother with you know i um, wonder though because mm. dan loves making jokes and he also does love sort of dipping his toes into like certain ideas of other stuff mm. i don't know i feel like maybe you would have at least like come up with like an initial framework just to play around for shits and giggles it's possible <laughs> it's hard to say yeah um it's I mean, funny because one thing I've, I've told other people is like i picked i was confident i can make this game in six months but then it, it took like four years start to finish. It took so long. I mean, but that's fine. We had nine to fives, you know, it, 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 it makes it hard and stuff comes up like the pandemic and, you know, other like Dan takes freelance a lot too in his free time, which um, probably not anymore. <laughs> be too busy with this trombone game now. It's so like, a, you know, yeah. stuff interrupted it and there was never a deadline, you know, it's hard to like, I don't know. Yeah, when you're working just nights and weekends on a hobby project, and especially before you've announced it, 
it's really easy just like to spend way too long on it because there's no pressure. You just keep messing with it, you know? Um, yeah. And also the pandemic slowed it down too, of course. We, we live in New York and yeah. like 2020 was wild here, you know, like everyone's just suddenly working from home and oh, yeah. all the grocery stores are wild. And it was just, so it was just probably like a three or four month period in 2020 where I just didn't do any work on it because you're just focused on like just going to the grocery store, like figuring out how to get food. <laughs> like, and, yeah. And like, I, I just have to stop you. I, I love hearing all this, but I'm biting my tongue so hard. I don't know if you see my face, but it's like, <laughs> you're like, so hard. you're like, I have, I have to, like, I like hearing this, but it's really boring. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Not at all. But it, it, I'm just so excited about what you're saying because, hmm. um, two reasons I like it and I like you. <laughs> and it also aligns so well with my, idea of who you two are and how you made this game i know we haven't talked in eight years but i felt like i got to know you then and it's just i'm having like a lot of i told you so in my head (laughs) moment i knew they were like this and they are like this (laughs) so you've had so you've had at least three what i would call sad trombone moments in this conversation where you've both frankly adorably talked (laughs) about how you should have done better and are like sad about it, even though you just came out with a game that the friggin' New York Post and CNN is like greatest thing ever. People like go on Twitter. If you look up Trombone Champ, you just say perfect game. Love this game so much. Never laugh so hard. Never get the Jake never gets old. And and yet Jackie started out with like. I understand why people didn't kickstart our game. We didn't. <laughs> yeah. And Dan was like, yeah, I did it all wrong. And then just now you're <laughs> like, oh, we should have made Trombone Champ in six months. Whoa, we messed okay. up. Wah, wah. So there's been these sad trombone moments that, as I know you do <laughs> in my own mind anyway, and knowing that you've made a ton of games and the, I knew you weren't selling them a lot of the time. I saw Trombone Champ when I saw that it was you that made it as an expression probably unintentionally (laughs) thinking definitely unintentionally now of how your career in games has been a lot of like we're probably screwing up but it's fun right (laughs) like this is this is this is funny this isn't gonna be big i'm not hitting the right notes but i like doing it i'm gonna do it another year and so many people especially in the pandemic relate with the feeling of like i'm just trying to do this i know it should be better (laughs) but yeah. I'm doing my best and it's at least funny, right? Like that feeling is something that it is a perfect game <laughs> and oh, is the, at the perfect time for that game. Like, I don't know if that game would have done as well when we weren't in a recession and in a pandemic and all that. I don't know if everyone related would have related with a sad trombone feeling, but, but now yeah. they do. <laughs> Thank you. That's high praise. I wouldn't call it a perfect game. That's for sure. It's really, I, I mean, the thing is I've just spent so long with it that, I, I, you know, I thought it was really funny at first, but then after like three years working this thing, I'm not laughing. <laughs> when I'm like, when I'm playing it, I'm certainly not laughing anymore. You know, <laughs> it's just like, these are jokes that I've seen, like all the jokes that are in Scatter Throughout, I've seen them hundreds, if not thousands of times. Well, um, also, you're pretty good at the game. So when he plays it, it sounds like decent, you yeah. know, and, and really the game shines when you're not great at it, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, which is most people. <laughs> No, I mean, I'm, I, 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 you're right. We're coming across as very negative. I'm very happy with how it came out. Um, and I'm actually shocked at the reception. Like, um, no, I think it's... there might be something to what you say. Like, my my mom said the same thing. She's she saw a trailer and she's like, people probably like it because it's funny and these are dark times. So she said something <laughs> like, something like that. <laughs> and that's kind of a it's kind of a heavy statement. But you know, I'm to be frank. I don't think many like comedy games do that well, you know. Mm. There's there are, some games have some jokes in them, but they're not, you know, they're not comedy games. Yeah. Um and I feel like comedy is under uh, underrepresented, you know. And um so I, I I did think it would go mildly viral. I thought mm. that people would like share videos. I thought that people would make funny tweets. You know, the tweets might get shared around, but I didn't actually expect people to like the game itself so much or for the game itself to do this well. So mm-hmm. It's kind of a super crazy surprise by that. It's it's blown past our highest expectations. I feel like though there's been there are a lot of comedy games, but usually the comedy lies in the dialogue or like characters or story. Mm-hmm. Well, like this has the comedy coming from the player. Like yeah. they they are making the joke. <laughs> That's right. That's right. 
I feel like is a different thing. Um, you know, the last game I could think of that kind of reminds me of this is um, that got pretty big was that Bennett Fadi game, uh, with the one where you're in the you're the guy in the pot with the stick oh sure you sure drag yourself around yeah yeah um, that's you know, Ho or getting so, over oh, it or getting over yeah. it that's yeah yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I guess it's less funny but the visual is funny it's yeah. one of those things where like the game itself is funny to watch or like Quop yeah the where... same guy made that. Really? Yeah, yeah same. I yeah, there I think, you go. It's all coming together. Yeah. I think <laughs> so <laughs> you're 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 practically interviewing each other, which I love. I wonder if you have more ideas about because I feel like it's been a part of your your formula, if you want to call it that, or your style from mm. the top. I feel like when we talked about Icarus Proudbottom teaches typing, I said like you get to be the funny one typing, and then like funny stuff mm. happens in response. And it reminded me at the time of uh, Monkey Island, how in the first one, you're the one who chooses the punchline. I don't know if you've played Monkey <laughs> Island, but yeah, uh, it's like uh, insult fighting. Oh, and yeah. 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 Right. And and you're the one who chooses how appropriate you fight like a cow when it's like the wrong punchline. Mm. And you're the one screwing up the joke, which is, in fact, the joke. When, <laughs> and, and Trombone Champ, you're the one screwing up the song, which is which makes it funny. So why do you? What do you think it might be about you and your style that you've consistently given the player the opportunity to be the one telling the joke as opposed to you feeling like you need to write the joke and they're laughing at your funny writing? You you know. give them toys to play with that are funny as opposed to like making it about you and how funny you are. You know, I think you might have thought about this more deeply than we have. It's well put. No, it's I, I think you're right. I, I do think. We have had games, you know, that have done less well than other games. And the less well, the ones that did less well are the ones like what you said, where like we're just telling jokes. Mm. Like I think Icar Icarus Proud Bottom teaches typing, like the gameplay was funnier. Mm. Then we made like an episodic sequel, which is like based on Twin Peaks. Um, and I like that one. But I think that was more like what you said, where like it's just kind of us trying to like shove jokes at the players. I don't know. It's very story based and like, you know very railroaded where the player doesn't have much of a choice but to just follow along mm. yeah i would say like um i don't really have like a mission statement or an ethos when it comes to games but if the closest thing i probably have would be that i don't want to make any games that are basically games that have been done before mm -hmm. um because i mean i don't want to rag in any indie devs specifically or anything but there are like a lot of people who make like platformers um, you know, and they have their own twist. They're like, hey, it's a, you know, it's a platformer set here with this character in this setting and the mood is this. Same is true of like first person shooters and stuff. Like there's so many, you know? Yeah. And of course there are lots of unique ones, but um, I, all the games I want to make, like I want to try to avoid that. And I want to try to do something that I can't think of that's been done before, mm -hmm. which is why I like like the two player typing game. I'm like, oh, I haven't heard of that before. Mm. And that's part of the thing of the trombone thing too. Like I, research it i'm like yeah, no one's really made a music game quite like this before it's like it's it is like unique you know mm -hmm. i just don't want to make a game that's like a reskinned version of another game so i think that might that in itself might just lead to fun gameplay i'm really into like the you know what gameplay is unique and fun mm. there was a game i was working on before this that i liked a lot it was um never finished it but i want to it's kind of like a twin six shooter except instead of like shooting bullets it's more like a billiard type gameplay where like you launch yourself as a ball and you hit other balls and then the balls bounce around. And that's kind I of the love it, but it was made and I'm in it. No, oh, <laughs> it's called pool life. panic. Pool panic. Yeah. It's oh, a, no. I'm, I, it sounded like he can't just be saying both of those things at the same time, but I yes, no idea. pool panic is real. Don't. It's a great game. You'll like it. I'll get you a code. It's made by a guy named Angus Dick. A uh, very nice guy. Uh, yeah. And he put me in the game because he likes me. Hey, so I'm nice. balls you can hit. <laughs> <laughs> is it? It's just called awesome. Jonathan Holmes. Uh, you know, I'm never named, but it's a oh, little okay. drawing of me just looking like oh. me. <laughs> it's, it's a really so... odd mental picture of yeah. like a photorealistic your head in the game. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know if you want to talk about it with the remaining time. I love to give options though, so I'll give you the option. How has it been to get suddenly CNN and the Washington Post in a short amount of time? You told me it was like 20 interviews in two days. Did you like all that attention <laughs> and all of that sense of like suddenly being in PR mode for, I, I'm just putting myself in your shoes. 
because I love to talk, it would be fine. But I would also be like, I wish I had a little more time to prepare for like my moment to maybe become uh, someone whose career is set in stone or not. Yeah, I think you just you nailed it with like the I would have enjoyed it more if we'd sufficiently prepared. Yeah, you know, like because, uh, uh, you know, I think, but we work at the moment. We still work nine to five Monday to Friday full time jobs. Yeah. So this game stuff is truly like a nights and weekends hobby. Yeah. So there's simply not enough hours in the day to like do these things. Um, yeah. So it's even, it's, yeah, just the weekends too. It's just been wild. Um, um, and and just to be clear, like I, I helped with some of the art, but like otherwise the game has all been Dan. So Dan has been doing like all of those interviews. <laughs> so, sure. But I've been trying to help with like almost to be as like publicist, like manage the emails, tell them like, oh, I'm putting you down for like a five o'clock with CNN. <laughs> yeah. Just like, I don't know. It's been wild. Cause you know, the emails pop in. It's like, oh my gosh, we got this one. We got that one. So and so well, contacted yeah. like, us. I like, like, like unbelievable. Yeah. Like just every day, like not freaking believing. Like this. I want people to like the game and I'm glad that lots of people are playing it and enjoying it. But you know, I think I'm just a little intimidated by having to transition from being a real hobbyist mm. into basically being a professional like overnight and that, that even extends to like the game itself like beyond the interviews because now so many people have it that like people are finding bugs they're asking about these things like i know how to code but i'm that like, coding is kind of secondary for me i'm more of an art person mm -hmm. so people are like making all these requests and like shit i don't even know how to do half this stuff <laughs> like, doing it great, yeah. though. like there's a lot of technical stuff that dan has figured out like way fast like there's a timing tool in there that he implemented in seemingly like overnight i don't think that works though actually <laughs> <laughs> what? people have said like it doesn't work at all it does but i, don't know. I mean they're, they're they're having fun with it so it's working i just the other thing i thought about the last attempt of at the question just pass <laughs> on it if you don't like it it's okay uh it's all about you i know you two have been together for a little bit oh yeah yes we're it's married time. yeah actually were we yeah. married last time Maybe i don't think so i um... but I, I think it was in the in the works yeah it was it, it you felt married that's for sure like We've... i didn't think you weren't we met in college, which was ages ago. I think mm. we started dating in 2008-ish. Mm. Right. Married in 2005. I think, no, I thought it was 15, not five. No, 15. Yeah, yeah. the five is in my head. 15, yeah. <laughs> so 15. coming up on whatever math, seven Who year knows? anniversary soon. Uh, you talk about it like it's just, you can't really imagine life without each other. <laughs> that's how it sounds, which it's is very time. romantic and sweet. Yeah. Oh. Do you think you would have made... It's a dumb question, but it, it, my thought about Trombone Champ was it was a reflection of both your experiences not becoming a multimillionaire yet <laughs> in oh. games and being like, I'm going to make it anyway because it's fun. It's fun even when you don't win. Mm -hmm. And also, it's not a game a lot of people would make on their own. Like, I thought, is there something about how you are with each other that is in trombone champ and the, and the fact that you're still going i'd say probably not because <laughs> most of the jokes are mine and jackie generally is just like man don't don't put that joke in there <laughs> that, that, jo true. that joke that joke is too stupid like i go to that jackie, is not true i'd go to jackie and be like i'm thinking of adding a second baboon to the game <laughs> okay yeah yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking of adding eight more baboon jokes and jackie's like what oh man <laughs> it's so um, it, it's so <laughs> interesting to consider i i've just always been you know even i'll talk to bands sometimes yeah. and there's like one songwriter but the songwriter will often say like i wouldn't be in the mood to write songs if i wasn't hanging around with this person the drummer who i just like and then mm. the drummer will leave the band and you'll notice like the songs are worse mm. so it's something you'll we'll never know we'd have to go to an alternate reality where yeah. you two aren't together but it's it's interesting to to hear more about how your dynamic like you kept pitching ideas to her like what do you think of this yeah. one and she <laughs> no, was like is. no hey, we're no i don't i don't say no all the time Sometimes. i mean usually he ha has me like test something out and i'm like laughing my ass off which is yeah. how it usually goes it is a good question like you know if i was like if we were divorced <laughs> would i have instead of trombone champ made like some really sad bitter game oh about, like, sad <laughs> trombone champ but you know but, but what, <laughs> But what's funny about this whole conversation is that, like, I feel like we did make Trombone Champ in a pretty bad time because, like, yeah, again, it's four years. 
like those were Trump years and then coronavirus years. And yeah. also just my full-time job has been insanely stressful and just, and I don't yeah, know. Last year we went through some stuff with my family. It, yeah, was, you mentioned. it was a rough like few years. Yeah. 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 And here it is. You've turned those sad trombone moments into <laughs> people literally all around the world. I know millions of people haven't bought it yet, but millions of people have laughed about it mm. and that's how things start. Right. And, and I, I just see such, huge things for you. And I'm, I'm again, having an, I told you so moment, like I always thought this would happen for you too. And, and, and now it's happening. We have less than one minute. Oh, Is there no. anything, should we just say goodbye? Yeah. I just, do? you know, I just want to say thanks. It's been yeah. really fun catching up. I'm no, it's glad so that, good to see you yeah. again. Yeah, you too. <laughs> I'm glad that people are playing the game and laughing. Like that's really the game. I've said this before, but the game's like a joke first and a game second almost. And it's just, it's a big joke. And that makes it sound negative, but you know, I mean, it's supposed to be funny. It's like, it's supposed to be funny first and people seem to get that. I'm happy about it. So. I mean, I could, I'm mad at you yeah. about saying that a little bit. I feel like Oops. Jackie being like, stop being so negative. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it is only funny because you made it so the player gets to play and be mm. funny as they're playing. And I'm mm. so glad you didn't just write a bunch of trombone jokes. Well, you see, it's more of a joke. <laughs> it's a real hilarious game that I love. Thank you. Thanks for having us. I'm probably yeah. going to cut off right now. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Stupid Zoom. Thanks for having us. It's been great talking. See you soon, hopefully. The trombone chant is gonna play it good. And if they play it bad, that's okay too. The trombone chant is gonna play it good. And if they play it bad, that's okay too. The trombone